Here in Baikonur at the Cosmonaut uh, Hotel, NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine, was Cosmos General Director Dmitry Rogozin. Thank you for your time, gentlemen. The State Commission just uh, completed its final approval of the crew for launch. This is your first trip here, Jim. Uh, you, your thoughts about the whole process in what historians call the cradle of human spaceflight here, and your thoughts and Mr. Rogozin's thoughts on the global reach of human spaceflight. Yeah, what, uh, what an amazing opportunity to be a part of history. Uh, you think back to all the things that have launched uh, from Baikonur. You go back to Sputnik, Yuri Gagarin, the first human in space, which launched the space age for human space flight. You think of the, 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 the Apollo Soyuz program when our two nations first joined in space with their cosmonauts and our astronauts in, in a spirit of cooperation in 1975. You go forward to the shuttle Mir program and then on to the International Space Station and, and to watch our two astronaut, our astronaut and their cosmonaut today again uh, launch on a, on a Russian Soyuz rocket, uh, which will be happening tomorrow. Um, it, is, uh, it is a bit daunting, it's a bit inspiring, um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a charge that we have to keep. Uh, and I look forward to seeing their successful launch tomorrow. I would like to say that for Russia, for the United States, it's a very important time because the level of cooperation that uh, the ISS has seen and during the previous project has been tried by time. But right now, Russia, the United States, the European Union are looking further in the depths of space. So it's very important for us, for the managers of uh, NASA and Roscosmos, to weigh the possibilities, the capabilities that our countries have, that our industries have, to weigh the ambitions that we have, to try to add them up so that humankind, Earthlings, no matter the nationality, could realize the long-term dream, the exploration of space and the understanding of where we are and why we are the only ones. We are just weeks away from the 20th anniversary of the launching of the first elements of the International Space Station, the Zarya module on November 20th, 1998, a very historic milestone in human spaceflight. 20 years later, could you have imagined that the space station would be the facility, the laboratory it is today, and how critical is it in terms of being a linchpin for future exploration? Uh, the International Space Station, of course, is a, a technological marvel. And of course, the science that's being done there is second to none. Um, and in fact, uh, what's even more marvelous about it than even the science and the technology is the fact that, that, that we have at, we've had at this point 103 nations do science on the International Space Station, do discovery on the International Space Station. So it, it, is a, it is a marvel of not just technology, but also of cooperation uh, to see all of our nations involved in the International Space Station working so hard in a collaborative way under a treaty arrangement, if you can imagine. Um, so you think about the fact that you know, we build a piece of the International Space Station, they build a piece of the International Space Station, and the first time we put them together is on orbit with humans doing EVAs, extravehicular activities, that, and, and the, the idea that it actually works, that it fits, and, um, and, and all the components are compatible. Uh, and so it, it really is an amazing opportunity to help us learn more about um, space flight than we've ever been able to learn before, human physiology, uh, but also all of the scientific discoveries. Um, and of course, the next step is to figure out how do we commercialize it for low Earth orbit, and then go further than we've ever gone before. And, uh, and that's what the International Space Station has done. It has demonstrated that together we can all accomplish more uh, than we ever could accomplish on our own. Um, and now we have more space agencies on the surface of the planet than ever before uh, so that we can do more than we've ever been able to do before. So we're really looking forward to the future. The ladder to space cannot have broken steps on the bottom. That is, if we're going to deep space, should that mean that we are to make our Earth lose 
the near orbit space station. So the International Space Station, in some form, is going to continue its existence. Second, in order to move farther and higher from Earth, will require much more independence of the functionality of the system. So the ISS, which I'm sure the uh, Russians and the Americans have already paid attention to, need to work with experiments that allow to make as much independent from the Earth as possible. Hereby, I mean water resources, radiation protection, etc. So the ISS is very important as the foundation.